All right. So the market the way it is now, there's a double bottom. the bull market. Really? We're going to have a correction. Degree? How far? I, I think we could have a couple more years of bull market ahead really? of us. Because look at all the worry. We're not in euphoria. We're far from euphoria. We're still in a world where we're contracting the supply of equity. We haven't even gotten to a world where new equity offerings exceed buybacks uh, and, and, and takeover, uh, you know, cash-based takeovers. The fact of the matter is the new issue world and the equity-based takeovers haven't created supply increasing. Normally, unless you hit that wallop of those trillions of dollars of new big bad, you get to where equity supply increases consistent with that but optimism euphoria. there are getting euphoria. pockets, right? I of mean, course. Dropbox coming out the gate up 40 percent. Oh, and everything about crypto was a right, window right, right. into looking at so euphoria to come. So doesn't that telegraph that or tells you drop euphoria see? will come? Okay. That's a sign that it's alive and well in the spring and we will get it down the way. But it's not actually euphoric now. So when you say two now. years left of the bull market, what Don't do you hang say? me on two. I un but, understand, but, but percentage-wise, sure. if you had to just throw a figure out there, how much more In growth? a model-conforming bull market on a global basis, the first third of the time and the last third of the time are more than the middle third of the time. That's what the does normal. That mean, then? Okay. It means that you get acceleration in the end, you get a okay. fast start, you get a slowdown, and you get acceleration in the end. And last year was strong. I'd expect after we get past this correction, we see average return in a bull market year, of which we haven't had, this has been a long, slow grinding bull market. Right. Average return in a bull market year is about 20%. The fact of the matter is, people have forgotten the magnitude of what normal is in a bull market. We ought to get some more good years before this is over that then lead to that optimism that turns into euphoria that has people not thinking, ignoring all little things and thinking about things are going to be perfect forever. Do you like technology? I think technology will be back after this correction, yes. The Normally, Facebook, does that telegraph problems for you? Uh, just think of Facebook maybe as one that lags a little. I was, I was listening to a panel yesterday of Facebook kind of against Google. And Google is playing this whole pattern much smarter than Facebook is because they're really saying that it's not our position to be engaged in trying to do the First Amendment suppression, which speaks to a journalist, that is involved in saying that website is one that you shouldn't be able to have access to our search engine. That's a smarter direction for them to play in a hands-off. And those two young guys who ran that company, they're going to, you know, brought in adult supervision. Do you think Facebook needs that? I think it is. The world we live in today is unfair compared to the world that I grew up in. When I was growing up, you didn't get venture capital-based CEOs who were kids. Yeah. They had to actually have proven histories and have been around, have been through the war some. But, you know, in the world of Bob Noyce, you know, that, mm -hmm. whole, that whole era, you had veterans that had actually been time-tested and had time to mature in the real world. When you become a celebrity Big Bang CEO in your 20s, you Watch become isolated from yeah. the world. How do you think President Trump's doing? Pretty well. Uh, perfect. No. Do we get perfect presidents? No. Is he unusual by any standard? Uh, overall, however, the economy's doing okay. Overall, <clears throat> if a different Republican president had picked his justices, people would think they were great. Um, fundamentally, he's doing okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a, th a thought right now Republicans are going to lose the House. Now, you, you look at the big, big picture and all, but does that enter into your investment strategy? Who's in control of Congress or who's in? Yeah, so I love gridlock. Yeah. I've always loved gridlock. We have a form of Nothing grid gets done. <clears throat> yeah, and so nothing hurts capitalism. We have a form of gridlock now that we're not conventionally used to, which is the Republican Party fractured, so not much happens. And you get the classic Republicans that won't stick with the core. The Republicans that hang on to the Senate, I think that's easy to see. Just look at the races. Just look at the, at, the, at the eight Democratic seats that are up in Republican states. It's going to be very hard for the Democrats. They, they in the might Senate. even pick up. Yes, indeed. In the yes, in the Senate. In the House, if the Democrats were to take the House, you revert to the traditional form of gridlock. Yeah. It's not what the Fox viewer traditionally would like to see, but it is the gridlock that doesn't accomplish adverse features against capitalism. Right. This administration in the next couple of years isn't about to ramp up regulatory. Yeah. Well, you'd be surprised what those Fox viewers think. Uh, real, real quickly, uh, real estate. 
yesterday, what do you, what do you yesterday think of real I heard Jeff Zucker. Did you hear about Jeff Zucker yesterday yes, I on heard Fox? About it. I was 10 feet from him when he said that. Did you, and did you I, defend us or did you say anything? It wasn't my place to defend <laughs> it. It wasn't my venue. I wasn't, I wasn't interviewing him. All but, right, all right. But, all right. but boy, oh boy, oh boy, you talk about an opinion. Jeez, yeah. oh jeez. Yeah. So he's, his opinions are sound and valid. Whatever. He said, he, he said, he, he said, literally, Tass has nothing on Fox. Yeah. Or Fox has nothing on Tass. Right. Either way you do it, it's no good. And they have nothing on Pravda. Um, let me, real quickly, real estate. What do you think of real estate right now? What kind of real estate? Real estate's not all one thing. Residential real estate. So I got two views on that. One, it's bull market. Two, the prices Still. are going up. Three, they're not going to go up as much as people think. The tax changes. Right. Um, a mortgage impact. But thirdly, you know, and I've written columns on this in USA Today, uh, two of them, which got some of the most hostile reaction, huge reaction and hostile consistently, which is that people don't account for the cost of home ownership correctly. And when you pull all the costs in, home ownership returns are never as good as people think they are because there's all the other costs the other that you stuff. need to build into it. And so people overestimate how good an investment homes are. And I, I think we're going to see in the period ahead that homes become a worse investment than they've been in the past. The fundamental reason for a home to become more valuable is either in nominal terms rising inflation or we're building family formation faster than we're building housing stock. And for a long time, we've been building housing stock faster than family formation. And in a low inflation environment, those two don't play for high returns. Interesting. Ken, very good catching up with you. Great to see you. Give my best to Zucker when you see him again uh, or Bannon or any of the above. Ken Fisher, uh, regardless of your views, bull or bear, one of the finest minds in the investment community. Uh, 